The RX 6400 is a great little GPU for gaming, but how does it handle high-end emulation? Well, I, I don't know, but I'm gonna find out. Oh, hello. <laughs> Tech the Weeb here. How you doing? Thanks for clicking on the video. Y you know, this RX 6400 keeps on surprising me. Serial time, baby. Ah! Oh my gosh, you really surprised me there. Um, I, I sure could go for a diet root beer. Ah! Ah! I'm Tech Dweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye Wow, that was a really good video. Ah! And it also keeps on surprising me because of its performance. It's a really good GPU. For the price. Yeah, it has some shortcomings. Only four PCIe lanes, lack of hardware coding, only two display ports. But if those things aren't important to you, and they're not important for me to be honest, then this is probably the best budget bang for the buck gaming performance that you could get. And it's low profile, single slot. And since we haven't got any other low profile, low wattage GPUs from NVIDIA, this is pretty much the only decent new entry level GPU. It can play games. I showed that in my review where I tested a bunch of modern games. There's a link to that video in the description below. But one thing I've been dying to know, dying I tell you, is what the emulation performance is like on this thing. I know I'll have no problem playing the older stuff, like your Nintendos and your Segas and your Game Boys, but what about the higher end emulation? What about Sega Saturn and Dreamcast? What about PS1, upscaled to 4K? What about PS2 or PSP or PS3 or Xbox 360 or GameCube or Wii or that other Nintendo system that I can't say the name of that we'll call the Snitch? Because if this GPU can emulate those high-end systems, then that opens up a, a huge library of games that this $160 GPU can handle. And that's what we're going to find out right now. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, right. The emulation video. Okay, okay. Here we go. Emulation time, baby. I'm going to be running this in my pewter running a Ryzen 7 5800X X570 motherboard, 32 gigabytes of 3600 MHz DDR4 RAM, and PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD. Full specs listed in the description below. Oh, and I didn't realize until I went to edit the video that my uh, st uh, game capture was set to 720p. So I recorded all this in 720p. I, I didn't want to record it all again, so I just went ahead with <laughs> making the video. H however, you're here to check out the performance and listen to my beautiful voice, so I hope you still enjoy the video. For these first few systems, I'm going to be using my Retrobat emulation build. Yeah, do you guys know about this emulation front end? It's freaking awesome. I made a video about how to set this up. I'll uh, link that in the description below too. It's a beautiful front end. It runs emulation station and you can use it to download all the uh, art for your games and the uh, videos and screenshots and everything. Keeps your game library all organized. It's just awesome looking as you can see. All right, let's start off with the real deal. Burger time. Yeah, well. Uh, of course, the low-end stuff is gonna run fine. I mean, no issues running any of the easy stuff. Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Turbo Graphic 16, Sega CD, you know, all, all that stuff will run on anything. And so will the lower-end 3D stuff. Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, PS1, you know, that'll run with no problem on basically any system. But what about running those in 4K? That's something I'm super curious about. So let's make that our first test. Let's do Sega Saturn first. Here's Panzer Dragoon, running in RetroArch using the Libretro Yamasen Shiro Core, upscaled to 4K, maintaining a constant 60 FPS. Same thing with this game, uh, Nights into Dreams, which is a pretty popular game, I think, because I see people testing it all the time, and someone in my comments asked how the performance was. I didn't really know about this game before testing it here. I never really played it. It's a, it's a weird game. I don't really like it. But I'm not here to yuck your yum. I, I personally don't like to upscale old 3D systems like the Saturn or the PS1. I like the chunky, pixely graphics. But if you're not a nostalgic weirdo like me and you want to give nice crispy edges to your 3D objects and upscale them to 4K, then yeah, you'll have no problem doing that on the RX 6400. This thing will run 4K Sega Saturn at 60 FPS all day day. Same thing with PS1. Here we are in RetroArch using the Libretro Medefen PSX Core. A uh, Vulcan backend, 16x resolution scale, and we don't drop below 60 FPS even once.
Crash Bandicoot 2 ran great, Resident Evil 2 ran just fine, although it's kind of weird seeing the 3D objects upscale to 4K against the old uh, low-res still image backgrounds in games like this. And the hardest PS1 game to emulate is Bloody Roar 2. And of course it's running just fine here. Although as you can see, our GPU usage is maxed out, so we're pretty much hovering at the edge of what this GPU can handle in terms of PS1 upscaling. Dreamcast won't be an issue. I mean, it's an easy system to emulate. Here's House of the Dead 2 running in RetroArch using the Libretro Flycast core, upscaled to 3840 by 2880, so you know, basically 4K, and it's holding a constant 60 FPS. The GPU isn't anywhere near being maxed out, so I know you'll find any Dreamcast games that'll give you any problems. And I, lo I lost my Nintendo 64 footage because of my stupid game capture. I, I gotta get a proper game capture setup going. Anyways, Nintendo 64 ran fine, using the Libretro Mupin 64 Plus Core in RetroArch, running with a 2160p internal resolution. I was running GoldenEye 007, and it held a constant 60fps. You'll have no issues with Nintendo 64 upscaled to 4K on the RX 6400. Moving along to PS2, here's Shadow of the Colossus, running in the PCSX2 standalone emulator. 6x scaling, so going up to 2160p. So we're running at 4K here, and it sort of runs. It's like at half speed, but yeah, as you can see, the, the GPU usage is max right out, and it just can't handle running PS2 games upscale to 4K. However, when we go down to 4X scaling, which is 1440p, it worked great. It maintained a, a steady 60 FPS. So for PS2, 1440p is gonna be the, the sweet spot. And the games, they really do look great at this resolution. Same thing happened with Burnout 3. Upscale to 4K, it, can, it can't hold a constant 60 FPS. But bump it down to 1440p scaling, and it'll, it'll run at 60 FPS all day long. There might be some graphical and performance settings you can tweak to get it running at 60 FPS, upscale to 4K, but yeah, honestly, 1440p is luxurious compared to the native 480p that the PS2 ran at. This is just fine, in my opinion. On to my favorite 3D retro system, GameCube. Running the Dolphin standalone emulator with 6x scaling, we're at native 4K, and Metroid Prime 2, we're mostly holding at 60 FPS. But we do get some dips. However, that's because of the sh shader caching. You know, this happens whenever I play this game, even with higher end GPUs. Y you can fix this by computing all the shaders before the game starts. I obviously, I did do that here, but I can tell that since it's running at 60 FPS consistently when it's not stuttering, that there shouldn't be an issue. Mario Kart Double Dash ran just fine. A few tiny stutters, again, from the shaders loading, but it didn't have an issue running at the native 50 FPS in this European version I had, upscaled to 4K. And the Wii runs great too. The hardware in the Wii was very similar to the hardware in the GameCube. Very similar specifications and horsepower. It just came with like widescreen support and the Wii controllers, obviously. So for emulation, you'll only really be able to emulate the games that you can map to a controller. Uh, Dolphin has lots of options for this. Uh, here I am playing Donkey Kong Country Returns, upscaled to 4K, and it's running amazing, staying at 60 FPS the whole time. PSP was a real treat. I'm running the standalone PPSSPP emulator, Vulcan Backend, with 6x upscaling. It's running Need for Speed Most Wanted, just fine. This game is only 30 FPS though, and it's a pretty easy one to run, so let's pull out the big guns. God of War. 
It's a very demanding PSP game. So let's see if, uh, how it runs. Yeah, it's running totally fine. <laughs> we do get the occasional tiny frame dip and stutter. So, you know, you can take this down to 4x upscaling to get rid of those. But they didn't really bother me here. This is how I play it. Not that I would play it. <laughs> I tried to play this game, but I gave up after like 30 minutes because I got so freaking bored. I'm a big fan of the new God of War on the PC, but, but I don't think I'd take to the older ones in this series. As for the Xbox 360, well, here's some Red Dead Redemption running in the Xenia Canary emulator at its native 720p resolution, with the FPS unlocked so we could go above the native 30 FPS in this game. And our FPS is all over the place. Sometimes it goes up to the 50s, sometimes it drops below 30. Uh, this game was locked to 30 on the console. It's a bit of an inconsistent experience, but it is playable. And it's such a good game. No reason not to give it a fair try. And no problem on the 6400 here. I'm not running this with any upscaling. This emulator is pretty new, and it has lots of work needed to optimize it for upscaled gaming. However, it does have built-in FSR upscaling. That you can enable in the config files if you want to try that. So, how do you feel? I don't know the polite word for it. I do. Stupid is the word we use around here. What were you doing? I was... Oh. I was doing something stupid. Well, you'll be okay. Here's Blades of Time on the Xbox 360. This lady looks pretty nice. She seems smart and sophisticated. I'm sure I'd like to spend some time hearing her opinions on all sorts of things, like blades and time. As you can see, the graphics are all weird in this one. Uh, how the areas that should be dark are all white. And that's just the emulator. Lots of glitches when emulating Xbox 360 games at this early stage, but but it, it's getting better all the time. I never believed that was really possible. And here's Gears of War 2. We're also running on the Xenia Canary emulator at the native Xbox 360 720p resolution. We're getting mostly 30 FPS, but we do get some dips. But again, the game is totally playable. This emulator, when, when we get dips, it doesn't slow down or stutter. It just gets regular old uh, FPS dips, the same way a PC game would get. So it's not a terrible experience. And when we do get FPS dips, you can see that the GPU usage isn't maxed out. So I, I don't think it's a fault of the RX 6400. I think the Xbox 360 emulation is it's still pretty new. And there's lots of work needed to get the performance up to where it needs to be. I'm just impressed that we can play these games at all. Especially on a cheap budget, low profile, single slot GPU like this. Here's that new portable system. I can't say the name of this system, or else the big N will hear me and do terrible things to my family and my cat. So we're just going to call this Snitch Emulation, using the latest build of the Yuzu emulator, and it works freaking amazing. Here's that Odyssey game, running upscale to 4K. It held a constant 60 FPS. It runs so good, and it looks freaking unbelievable. Upscale to high resolutions. And then that other popular game, the Wild Breath one, uh, upscaled to 4K, it couldn't maintain a constant 30 FPS, which is what the game natively runs at. So we had to go down to 1080p and disable anti-aliasing. It worked much better, played at a constant 30 FPS. And uh, yeah, th that's playable. Yeah, there are still some visual glitches. Some of the shadows were a bit weird, but I think the performance issues are to do with the emulation itself, considering how well that Odyssey game ran. Yeah, to be fair, Snitch emulation is just in its infancy. I don't doubt that it'll get much better in the near future. At least it's playable for now though. And finally, let's end on a high note. PS3, using the RP CS3 emulator. PS3 emulation is much more mature than Xbox 360 emulation, so I was expecting some decent performance, but I was kind of blown away at how well it did. Upscaled 400% up to 4K, we're getting a playable FPS. It's not 60 FPS. We hover between 45 and 60 FPS, but we're not getting slowdown or audio stutter. So you can totally play like this if you're fine with like 
55-ish FPS. But if we bump the resolution scale down to 200% scale, which is 1440p, and we can actually enable FSR upscaling here to get it looking sharper, we go right up to 60 FPS. <laughs> That's pretty darn cool. That even the cheapest budget low profile GPU available can do PS3 emulation at 100% speed upscale to 1440p with FSR. Oh, by the way, this game is a very good representation of my real life skateboarding skills. And here's another game, Lord of the Rings Aragorn's Quest. For Frodo. This game is what I'd call a hidden gem. I'm a Lord of the Rings nut. I've read the books like five times. I've played all the games. This is actually a really good game. I played through the whole thing. It's sort of like a story within a story. A Balrog? There weren't any Balrogs at the Black Gate. That was in Moria, silly. You control Sam Gamgee's son, whose name is Frodo, and you explore the Shire and get ready for a big party because the king, Aragorn, he's going to be visiting the Shire. And then you also hear the story of Aragorn's quest. And you get to play as Aragorn and Gandalf and stuff as you go through the story. It's very kiddish. It has local co-op, so you can play this with your younger cousins, like I do. Or with your own kids, if you're lucky enough to have mated with another human, like I haven't. I, I mean, I shouldn't have said that. I'll edit that part of it. Yeah, this is a really good game, with lots of Lord of the Rings lore hidden throughout the world. Lots of stuff to discover if you read the books. And it's running just fine here, upscaled to 4K. This game only runs at 30 FPS on the console anyways, so it's not hard to reach that level of performance. Going into this test, I, I really didn't know what to expect. I had a hunch that it would run all the lower end stuff with no problem. PS1, Saturn, Dreamcast, even upscaled to 4K. Yeah, I, I wasn't worried about that. But I wasn't expecting to be able to play PS2 at 1440p. I wasn't expecting to be able to run PSP with 4X upscaling. I definitely wasn't expecting to even be able to play Xbox 360 at all, or PS3. Definitely not that other new portable game system. But this GPU handled everything I threw at it. So is it a good GPU for emulation? Well, heck yeah it is. Is it also a good GPU for PC games? Uh, yes, it is. I already told you it was. Don't you remember? Should you buy one? Well, I don't know. Yeah, probably. Why do I talk like this? Because I have allergies, okay? What's with all the questions? Just get yourself an RX 6400 and let me play with my Lego in peace. <laughs> ah! And that brings us to the end. But what do you think? Good GPU? Good for emulation? Is there any emulation stuff that I should have tested but I didn't? Anything else you want to see running on the RX 6400? Let me know in the comments. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you liked the video. Or the thumbs down button if you didn't. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. Stop by my Discord server and say hi sometime. We got a good bunch of dweebs over there, I'll tell you that much. I'm Tech Dweeb signing off. Thanks for watching. Bye bye I sure do love this RX 6400. Yes, I sure do. Ah! Wait, what? What the heck?